All right, Adam, thank you. It's Monday, so we have our Wise Guys segment today. Joining me now is Paul Quiat. So, Paul, what do you have for us this morning? Yeah, so today, uh, it's a little bit of a continuation of last week, talking about uh, polarization, but first uh, with an application of how do we see in 3D? So lots of people over the week maybe saw uh, movies in 3D. Yes. And so the question is, how do, how do we see in 3D? And so, of course, uh, one of the answers is that we have binocular vision. We have two, two eyes. There's other cues, that depending on how far away things are, for things that are farther away will look smaller, things that are close. But, you know, if you just hold up your thumb, depending, and you look at something distant, the further your thumb is away, uh, let's say the closer it is to your eye, the bigger, the more distant, different those images uh -huh. will look. And so there's a graphic that just kind of shows that, uh, that it, our brains interpret a more different image to mean that something is closer. So if we want to fake that by, uh, in like a 3D movie, we only have a two-dimensional image, but we want our brains to think that there's something three-dimensional. So we need to send different images to the two different eyes. Okay. And the way that that was originally done was actually using color. Uh, so we could use, for example, a red filter uh, on one eye, a blue filter on the other eye, and then the image on the screen had, there was a red visual field and a blue visual field, and they were different depending on how far away the object was supposed to be. Now, there's a problem, an obvious problem with that, which is that you can't see movies in color with mm. that because you're only, you're using the color to encode distance. Okay. So another way that you could do it is you could just turn off, you could put a shutter in front of each eye, and you could just have one eye only looking at the screen for one instant, change the image on the screen, change which eye you can look, and keep toggling back and forth. And that's how something like a, uh, as we can show here, uh, like a game system would work where you have these time synchronized glasses uh, that can flutter back and forth to see things. Now that's kind of expensive. You need to have electronics to synchronize everything. Uh, okay, so then the other way that we're more common uh, aware of is using polarization. So I talked about last time that polarization, that light is this electromagnetic wave, and uh, there's one more graphic that shows that, I guess. And uh, the polarization is the oscillation direction of that electric uh, field. So, for example, it can be oscillating up and down. That would be vertical polarization, or it could be oscillating side to side. That would be horizontal. And we can make something that blocks out one polarization if we have, like, a filter. And this is the next slide. Uh, uh, this is a thing which is only going to let light that is oscillating not along the long molecular change, so light that goes along the polarized along the molecular change will be absorbed and the other light will be uh, transmitted. And this was actually invented by a, a physicist, Edward Land, uh, in, back in uh, the early, uh, back in the 1930s. And he was inventing it because he wanted to deal with glare off the road. Okay. So why does, what does polarization have to do with glare? So. Um, this, so it turns out that if you have a horizontal surface, it turns out that horizontally polarized light, which is this is supposed to represent, will bounce well, and vertically polarized light will not bounce well. So if you have glare off a horizontal surface, it'll tend to be horizontally polarized, so you want to have vertically polarized sunglasses. Okay. So we can show this actually off the main, off the main camera going back, uh, not, the, not the close one, because I need the glare from this reflecting off. So if we can look at the glare off of this, and I have here just a pair of uh, sunglasses, and these are normal sunglasses, and I need, yeah, if we could, uh, good, okay, so now we can actually see the glare off this screen, mm. All right, and I'm just going to make that so that it's a nice and polarized, because I want this to be a polarized light source, and if I look, actually I don't even need it to be polarized, it's fine, the glare anyway. So I can definitely see the glare off this, and I'm going to put my sunglasses in front, and you'll see that in this orientation it's dark, uh -huh. and in this orientation, in this orientation it's a little bit darker, and in this orientation it's a little bit lighter. So the okay. polarizers are supposed to prevent the glare, but then he said, oh, I can also use this to make a 3D movie. So this uh -huh. is how modern 3D movies work. If we go to an IMAX, for example, we use these IMAX glasses. Uh -huh. so let me just put this polarizer back up here again. So these are glasses which are going to transmit in one lens uh, horizontal polarization and the other lens vertical polarization. Oh, so if I just kind interesting. Of okay. a little bit here, I can see that. see that it's bright with one eye, dark with the other, and if I just rotate this, then it, then it rotates. So this, in this way, the left eye is only going to see, say, horizontal polarization, the right eye is only going to see vertical polarization. So that's great. So that's how, how IMAX movies work. Now, there's one problem with this is that if you tilt your head, it's not so good, because if I tilt my head with this, you see that I, I'm going to get light through both lenses. So that's yes. not great. So if instead you do a real D 3D, this is a different kind of company, mm -hmm. they use circular polarization like we talked about last time. And with circular polarization, I can rotate these and the light is still going to get through no matter how I rotate my head. Just one lens is going to let through left circular polarization, one right circular polarization, and so on. Now I can still see different images to 
to the two eyes, but it doesn't matter if I tilt my head, so it'll work at any orientation. So a little bit of science next time you go to a 3D movie. Now you know um, a little bit of background there. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for visualizing all of this with us. We'll be right back. Thank you.